counter these types of, of thoughts? How do you get the message out to people who are fearful so that they can sign on? So they can say, okay, <coughs> you're a sign, I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to make a difference here. Like turning, turning off the other messages and actually looking at what is <coughs> as opposed to just being receiving, internalizing, and processing messages from media. Um. Well, means. Something that has really stuck with me through time is um, my grandparents are both um, Holocaust survivors, Eastern European Jews, and something they taught me when I was very young was um, about the fragility and um, kind of illusion of comfort. Um, and they would tell the story of, you know, people refusing to leave their towns, even when tanks are rolling down the streets and rounding up their neighbors, like, well, I own my home. I have hot water, I have a bed to sleep in, my kids are going to school, like, I'm okay. I have the creature comforts, I, like, this feeling okay, and those are people that are first to go. Um, and, you know, that's something that I'm really struggling with right now, is that the fact that I can sit wrapped in a down comforter on my MacBook and read about my civil liberties being taken away and indefinite detention and, like, being, you know, stripped of all of these um, rights and safeties and securities I have, and there's this really severe dissonance in my mind, like, I'm working full time, I'm earning money, I have a home, I have a roof, I have a car, but very quickly the rug is being pulled out from under me, and, you know, what are the stakes? Like, at what point, like, well, who says it, like, uh, you know, every society is only three meals away from revolution. Um, at what point will I feel unsafe enough to stand up? And at what point is it too late? And, and I know for myself, I'm scared as hell. I think just the fact that all of us are here in a room at a place identified as subversive theater and then performers of occupied animal farm, it's not enough for all of us to get rounded up and thrown into the <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I think uh, so quickly, any sense of safety, security, or hope for um, the future has already dissolved, and, and that's is kind of like my igniting force of like, well, something's got to change because this shit is scary looking, and I'm afraid to have kids yeah. um, at this point. Um, you know, Martin Luther King said the only thing necessary for evil to prevail is for men and women of goodwill to do nothing, and I think that you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with fear. I don't think there's anything wrong with. Uh, anger. I don't think there's anything wrong with violence. I don't think there's anything wrong with any human emotion. I think what we have to do in times of transformation is we have to look at our responses to those emotions, whatever they are, and we have to be responsible for them, and we have to learn how to have a new relationship with those emotions that all of us feel. It's not just, we're, we're focusing right now on fear, right? But we could just as easily have a conversation about anger. We could just as easily have a conversation about love, about truth, a lot of things, right? And, 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 the, and we, have to, we have to respond to those emotions in a way that transform where we are now. Because where we are now, we know is not good. We know that, even though we might have the trappings of goodness, we might have the hot and cold running water, and the job, and, and the wife, and paying the taxes, and yeah, we're not being detained, right? But all around us, that sense of enclosing in we all feel that. I mean, that's why we're here. That's why you're doing these performances. You feel it. I feel it. We all feel it. You can, you sense it. You know you're being ruled. You know what? You know when the big boys get in the room to make decisions. You ain't one of them. You know that. Everybody in this room knows that, right? So we can pretend all day long. You can pretend you're safe, but when your number's up, it's up. And so you know, you know the you know the whole uh, you know the whole story about you know when they came for the when they came for the Jews I wasn't a Jew and when they came for the gays I wasn't a gay and until you know they came for me and there was no one left to stand up for me right so you know and I I have two children you know uh, you know one's in a you know a good college in Philadelphia and the other one's at City Honors and you know they're doing great but it, it terrifies me I see this police state being just just constructed around our lives, you know? I see the, the TV cameras going up. They're all on the throughways. They're all on the streets now. No one's talking about them. I didn't need to vote on it. There they are. Somebody's watching me. I don't even know who they are. I'm not watching them. Who's watching them? 
You know? So, and so, I mean, I see this whole state being constructed around me. New laws, the NDAA she was talking about, mm -hmm. all around, every day, another one, another one, another one. I mean, it's obvious that the children you love so much, my children that I love so much, the time isn't going to be 20 years to stand up in the future. The time to stand up is now, while we still can, while we still can make of this, while we still can gather together. I mean, it's not long. I mean, we're not talking hundreds of years. We're talking months, you know, maybe or a few years before they have the laws in place, the technology in place to say, you know, you guys can't have this kind of theater. You can't have these kind of meetings. To think that that's not far off, I mean, I don't know who was it said that said that when fascism comes to America, it will come dressed in a flag carrying a cross. And that is exactly, that's exactly where we are now. It, it, fascism is all around us. Corporatism is all around us. It controls our lives. It decides what story is told on the news. It decides who's telling the story. It decides how to frame them, how to dress them. How, and it decides who's going to be the villain of the night. It decides all of that. And are you in on those decisions? Yeah. Are you in on any of these decisions? The only decision we're on now is the one in these rooms. This is direct democracy. When we have a say, when we decide the kind of world we want to create, you know? And that's the one that matters the most, is what we decide. And I'm past the point of being scared. I was scared a long time ago. I'm in the point of rage and anger yes. right now. And I just, I will not let my children I will not give them that battle. That battle is mine as a father. I'm fighting that battle in the streets now. Right now. I'm going to have it out now. Now. Well, the thing that thing that me crazy. This is real, so, real quick. Um, the thing that drives me crazy is that on the media and in those signs, they tell us what we are thinking. Okay. They're speaking for us. Oh, the people have, have spoken. They've said this. This is what they want. No one asked me. I was never asked. Why? Why are you saying that I'm saying this? Mm, yeah. And I've got uh, some Yuri's been just coming in. Um. Well. Uh, just to touch base on the common misconception, there are a lot of us with jobs. Just so everyone knows. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Jamie has a job. She goes to work every single day, and at five o'clock she gets out, and then she comes down to camp, Rick's and she job. pickets a sign until probably like what midnight. Then she goes to work every day. Another, another, another quick point. Um, societies are. I'm, I may or may not be going for a PhD in anthropology, but societies are based on basic. Are, are a bunch of people who feel that they have the same amount of values, and then they create norms. Now, society's norms are based on, you know. Where you came from, who you grew up with, you know, your, my mom was Roman, or my parents were both Roman Catholic, so I was like raised as, as a Roman Catholic child to believe a bunch of really messed up stuff that really just goes back to ancient Egyptian sun worship. I figured that out later, but um, like the thing is, a lot of people don't question. And that's what's so great about people like this. Is, well, not people, people who have discussions like this. This is almost like going back to like the revolutions in like France and in Europe in like the 17 and 1800s when they would just like sit in salons instead of like. But here we are in a theater instead. Mm -hmm. I think that's so cool. But um, society is based on your perception of reality. And if you take away everything that could be considered a norm, besides what we consider taboo, it's a whole different picture that you can paint. And I think we're painting in colors that we haven't used before. And I think it's very important to recognize that we're making a work of art here. And people don't really realize that they don't think, you know, there's theater, TV and film, you know, classical art, music, like whatever, but when you bring all those things together, the real art comes from the people. It comes from the soul, it comes from the heart. It comes from interactions between day to day. I'm sure that Vincent Van Gogh didn't just, you know, 
open up a, a magazine and was like, oh, there's a sunflower, I'm going to paint that shit. I'm sure he was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was. <laughs> 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 <laughs>